a little bit of a Bible study here. You know, when we read the Gospel of St. John, the fourth Gospel, which is a very specific and different manner of presenting the events or the life, the ministry, the life, the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, compared to St. Matthew's, Mark's, and uh, Luke's Gospel. Because this Gospel of St. John is somehow scholars would call teaching us Christology, okay, that is the very heart of our study of the sacred scriptures, the center of which is Christ. It teaches us Christ coming from above and uh, from above going to below. Some, sometimes they call this the Christology from above. No? While Mark, Matthew, and Luke's gospel is a Christology from below. Kay gikan sa pagkatao dito na nasaka. Iyaha kay gikan sa pagkadios na himung tao. And we are reminded here of uh, the prologue of St. John. No? St. John's gospel. Our gospel reading today is still the second chapter of the gospel. No? Bago lang nagsugod. And in the beginning of this gospel, we are told about the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us. Okay? And he had shown his glory, uh, the, son, the glory of the Son of the only Son of God. Now, in this context of Jesus' presentation, or especially the, how the Gospel of John presents, there are important sections or little moments that as a reader or as readers of this particular Gospel of John, we have to be aware. Because John makes it a particular way of uh, explaining to the readers what such an event or such a detail means. And today's Gospel reading is an example of that. When it says, but he was speaking about the temple of his body and talking about the disciples, recalling it later when he died and he rose from the dead. This is what we call a parenthetical remark. And, and parenthetical remarks are always very important because as readers, we don't have to be lost in what we are reading. We are already grounded, we are already led into the very heart and the very truth that the gospel is presenting. And another thing, this is also given so that no one will misinterpret it. No? It's already something of a catechetical by nature to tell us that what Jesus was saying is something about himself which has not yet taken place. That's why the temple that Jesus was or is referring to, according to the parenthetical remark, is the temple of his body. And he is talking about his passion, death, and resurrection. Now, being the temple, being his body, this temple also reminds us that we are part of this. We are, we are actually materials that make up the temple of God. So when we talk about the church, it's not something like the place that we are here now. It's not something about the cathedral or the beautiful church that you have built or that has been built, you know, the basilicas that we find all over, uh, in so many places. It is not just that. Uh, it is not just that. Because the essence of being a church is a people, being a people gathered together in celebration and sharing with each other our pains and our joys. Doing many disciplines, for example, like the disciplines of Lent, praying, fasting, abstinence, and almsgiving, singing joyful songs, sometimes uh, trying to, uh, to, to, con to, to take a look into the season of Lent, diba? Walay Alleluia, something like that, no? Walay Gloria, okay? There are so many beautiful things that we actually observe and celebrate. But being part of the body of Christ, as St. Paul would say it clearly in his first letter to the Corinthians about the body made up of different parts, you know, we have different functions to perform as well. Kay ang lawas dili raman tanan mata, ang lawas dili raman tanan ulo, ang lawas dili raman tanan kamot. That's why the variety of gifts and the variety of roles that we play make the church a very, very beautiful and interesting entity apart from being the body of Christ. And since we are the body of Christ, our head is Christ himself. 
And when, wherever the body is, there is always the, the head. And when the, in the, and when the head suffers, we also suffer. When the head is glorified, we also are glorified. And so it is in this context of the, of the third Sunday of Lent that in this very reading itself, we are always made to experience and we are reminded of how we become each and everyone's co-member or co-partners, as it were. And this is where we have to take a look into feeling also through the needs of our brothers and sisters. And that's the reason why the disciplines of Lent is not just very personal, but it's also outwardly manifested. No? At ako naman siguro yung explain ninyo, no? Now, when we fast, we save money and we save time. So what do we, what do, we do with the time we save for buying and cooking? We, we, say we do it for prayer. No? And then what do we do with the money we are supposed to buy for food? We give it to those who are in need. No? Muna siya ang three in one. No? Prayer, fasting, and abstinence. And it actually embodies what the whole church is doing. It's not that ako rin naghimo ni ini. No? Sometimes there was, a, at some time ago, there was a question to me, Padre, dili ba na siya unfair nga ako rin mag-ampo para sa mga nagkinahanglan? No? Kabalo mo kung sa ito bag? No, it's really not unfair because before you know it, before you pray for somebody else, daghan pong nag-ampo ni mo. And that is what it means to be a body of Christ. And this body is not just limited to one locality. It's throughout the world, in fact, throughout the universe. Because together with this body of Christ are the saints and those who are in glory, the angels and the hosts of heaven. And so it is a very huge entity. We are just little specks of it. But even if we are so little, bisag unsa ta kagamay, adu na tay papil nga mahitabo, nga himuon. Kay kung nag usa ka lawas, mura ba jigso pasol ba? Kung mawad-an og usa ka piece, dili kompleto. So don't think yourself as uh, dispensable. No. All of us are very important and thanks be to God. And the very reason why we are important is he died. He suffered and he resurrected for each and every one of us. And so as we continue to, to do all the necessary observances during Lent, Korinta Kaadlaw Rabitaw na. Unsa man ang Korinta Kaadlaw, kumpara sa 326 days na pwede ta mukaon o karne, something like that, pwede daghan kita mga buluhaton. So Korinta Ragid Kaadlaw ang ipangayo because that is for the good of the church as well. And not only just for the good of the church, it's also good for us. No? Kanang fasting, health-wise, makatabang sa baya na nato. No? Makatabang na nato ng fasting, oy, eh, pag singari rin tagkaog baboy, you know what I'm talking about. No? So, control, discipline, but that is part of being the body of Christ. And final word to this is, why are we called the body of Christ and we do the disciplines? Because we are called at the same time disciples of the Lord. And the word discipline comes from the word disciple, a follower of the Lord, to the cross up to his glorious resurrection until he comes again in glory. Amen.